Hello again. Today I'm painting wet sand that's catching the afternoon light so it's made it a very intense colour and warmed up the whole picture. In and then there's some sand just underneath the rocks on the other side of the beach. Not quite so dark and then a pencil line of sand going round the people on the other side. goes quite a distance and then feather the end out. Now there's an island of sand that's coming in so I'm just adding that more lightly because I've got to get water to mix with it so I'm just being more cautious and it comes further up but it needs a casual pattern because there are streams of water. So I'm just letting the brush dance across the page, taking it for a walk. It's a warm day. It's got a very warm sky. And the sky is an indistinct blue gray. So I'm going to get French ultramarine and tint it with homemade gray. So I'm using yellow ochre again because it matches the sand and some azillion crimson. Just mix them all together. I think I'm going to use some manganese blue just to give it a bit of a lift. So I'm going to use a big flat brush for a change and I'm going to wet the paper first so that the sky goes on with slight variation. So I'm now going to load the brush fairly well and go in from the other side. Now I'm going to just change the colour slightly and add a little bit more manganese blue and a zillion crimson just to make it slightly different. Try and go around the headland the best I can. And up to the island down the other side. Now in my reference some reason it's slightly darker on the sides it might be that there was just a burst of sunlight coming through the middle so i'm going to try and incorporate that i don't want to leave a square so i'm trying to make it a little bit random so now putting the darker sky in that your focus is instantly in the middle of the picture i've mixed up the brown which is indigo and burnt sienna and the homemade grey which I've mixed with Naples yellow to make it a bit lighter. Leaving the colours deliberately separate so that I can dip into both of them and the rocks change colour just by the island. So I'll start and work out just adding a little bit dark as I go for nooks and crannies. Some of them are catching the sun. So I'll just keep stirring the paint to get a slightly different colour as I work down to sea level. Taking it back and then just dropping a little bit more in on the narrow part just to make it a bit darker. And then here there's some crevices where it joins or it's been eroded. So I can just put those in very lightly. The rocks get flatter as they get towards the waterline, so I can just make a few little marks, a tiny bit of colour change in them, just so that they look in harmony with the previous rock. And then the rocks change colour as they get nearer the beach. So I've got like a dirty yellow ochre, which has got I didn't clean the brush too much. I had already got darker colours on it. So I'm putting on the top of the rock to start with. I'm now going to go back and just add a few points. And it changes to grey. So I've already got my grey mixed up. And it doesn't matter if it's still wet because they just gently bleed into each other and give a more natural finish. And there is a dark line at the bottom, but I can't do that until it's dry. And that's giving a nice contrast with the rich sand colour. 
taking it up into the previous layer a little bit and then as it goes further up it's more grey I've put a list of all the colours I'm using in the description together with the recipes of how to make others and then there's a dark brown line which I'll tentatively put in I'm just going to add some more sienna to that it's not a rich brown but it just needs to be separated from the grey a little bit and I've got some deep shadows so I'll put those in in the brown and then just slip the indigo on top of it and then some slightly darker brown just all adds to the shape and form and it goes back to being grey so I'll clean the brush off fairly well and just add loose areas of grey and then I'm going to drop some warm colour into it just to give it a little bit more shape as it meets the rock try and cover the white paper and I can go back now and do the brown edge to this one that I couldn't do earlier because it was all too wet and that's not a straight line that again has got little points in it going up it's got some grass growing on it and then it goes back to being brown with some definite shape and form to the rock so I'll drop the indigo in and then drop some brown on top of it and then on top it looks almost like sand dune so I'm just gonna make a few little marks and a tiny bit of green and I've gone up a bit further with the paint because there's a hillside behind but there's hardly any difference so what I want to do is just lose the paint very watery so that there isn't a, a nasty line there the far hillside has got a lot of light grass on top so I'm mixing a green with yellow ochre just mixing the sky colour and the beach colour together really and it's a bit further away so I'm just going to add a little bit of Naples yellow it's a thin growth of grass on a very rocky outcrop so I'm just claiming the skyline which hasn't got grass all the way it's got rock as well so I'm going to put that in just as a first layer and then come back with more yellow ochre and just drop it in to enrich it grass clings to some areas of the cliff but not others so I'm bringing it down a little way and then I'll add some different tones to it when it's had a moment to dry off I think nearer the right of the picture is not so exposed on the headland so it's slightly thicker growth and slightly darker so I'm just adding more blue to the mix going in from the bottom this time from the line of the little headland with a rocky outcrop in front and then it changes to more or less rock I just put a little bit of dark on it's still wet so the paint's bleeding which is quite useful and then just feather it out a little bit or I don't want a lot now I need to go back in with a mixture of Naples yellow and very light grey so I've still got the grey I mixed earlier mix them both together to make a very light grey and drop it into the gaps now I've dropped it in I can see that the grass on top needs to come down a bit more there and then again very dark brown at the bottom so the same colors that I used earlier the indigo and burnt sienna and just put in the low tide line And there's a couple of islands there as it's very low tide. Then go back again. Just make the line a little bit stronger. I'm just going to take it up a bit just to make a more uniform line. So next I've got to lighten it a little bit. So adding a little bit more burnt sienna. And little Naples yellow and take it up the cliff just a few broken lines doesn't matter if you miss a bit and the same 
on the island which has got a curved side so we just drop some Naples yellow in there so the next thing is to put the sea in which is warmer than the sky so I'm mixing turquoise and manganese blue and a little bit of homemade grey all together and then just tinting it with a little bit of French ultramarine to make a grey green sea and I'm starting short of the horizon to get the line and then I'm going up from it going very gently up to the line I put in And because the tide's out, there's no surf around the island. I'm taking the water back so it disappears behind the headlands. And there is surf where it's meeting the beach. And then the water on the beach is a different colour because it's on top of the sand. And I want to get rid of all the white paper here because I want the surf line to have the most visual impact. It's going up to my pencil line again. The next thing to do is to... Just look at the surf line. I might have to go over these again when it's a bit drier, but it's, it's made a start. So the next step is to put the water on on the beach, which looks slightly purple as it's on top of the sand. So I'm using the cobalt violet and the blue I've already made up for the sea leaving a gap for the surf going up to the sand and I've got people and I've got reflections of people so I'm just going to go round them in line with the headland, I've got a brown reflection instead of a bluey purple one. Now, I don't want to just have a sudden stop, so I'm going to do the purple one a bit further. Then the brown can go on top of it in certain places and bring it forward, coming up the sand, but it's not solid, it's in little rivulets. So I'll just dilute it a little bit. And then on the far side, it is brown, but there are some blue bits going through it. So I'm just going to put them in roughly. And then add another coat of paint to the sand in the middle to make it brighter. And now returning to the tide line, which has got slightly bluer water. I'm just putting that in just around the rocks. slightly deeper there and a little bit more of a wave just add some viridian to it now the water coming in it's got hints of sand so I'm going to use a flat brush and just make a few gentle marks less is more with this sort of thing this is only a little bit of standing water but it's catching the light so Make it look deeper than it is. Just really the barest covering, which is why everybody's walking on it. And through here as well. Just little hints. Lose some of the edges a little bit. And then there's some dark reflections of the rocks. So I'm going to use a mixture of burnt sienna and indigo just make a dark brown by mixing the two it's quite a warm brown so just mixing a little bit more sienna with it and some yellow ochre to match the sand try and have harmony between the colors and to start with there's a area here that's just catching the reflection of the rocks behind it and then a deeper area further out And that's not all the same colour because it's got 
reflections of the cliff and that comes down to about here always find something to map it off against so I'll just drop the brown in and then it's got quite yellow areas so I'll warm up the brown and just drop some odd colours in and then anything yellow will send other colours back it's like a chemical reaction so first of all I'm just going to make a point because the rocks are quite tapered and then I'm going to drop in some chrome yellow any bright yellow will do and it will just give a highlight further down I've got some more little rivulets of water that are picking up a reflection and I'm going to make the first slot a little bit richer it's had a chance to soak in a moment too and just put some yellow on that as well just all helps warm it up and break it up and then I'll take it past the people that are there and back towards the shore I'm trying to leave room for the reflections of the people so now the whole beach is warm and glowing in the afternoon sun so the next thing I've got to do is the bottom of the headland, which is quite brown. So I'm going to mix up again the indigo. If you haven't got indigo, anything dark, just anything blue, blue or dark will darken the, the brown, but not make it glow too much. And I'm going to use the number one brush because the cliff is some distance away. Just go around and find any dark areas. And there's some dark on that rock. And then do up and down movements with the brush. Just loosen the edge of the first dark paint just to give it a lost edge. Take some of it up a little bit. And then do some in shadow. And then reducing it as it gets nearer the shore. I'm just going to drop some blue in there, just mixing some blue with a tiny bit of brown, just to make it more of a grey. And I'm going to drop that in from the bottom. Doesn't matter if it goes on the seat, I take it off with my finger. And then get a damp brush, not a wet brush, just a damp brush. And just take some of the edges up. I'm just going to drop a little bit more blue on there. Just to separate it. Because it's catching the sun so it's quite light. And then warm up the hillside a little bit. I just put some colour in there to claim the space. So I can now warm it up a little and add some Naples yellow. If you haven't got Naples yellow, very weak yellow ochre to the actual cliff top itself. And that shows that it's catching the afternoon sun in the same manner as the, the beach. And it's a hot day, so there's lots of people actually wearing white, but I'll start with some that appear to be wearing black, which I'm using Payne's Grey. And then I've got reflections coming off them. Oops, somebody in front with black trousers, a white shirt, and a lady next to him wearing yellow. I'm just going to lighten that off a bit so she shows against the sand. And she's got blue trousers. And again, I need to do their reflections. So these reflections change colour halfway up. And then we've got some children. So much smaller shapes and smaller reflection. And then more people in black. And one person's got a red top on. 
so I'll just make a suggestion these are all squiggles there's nothing too complicated about drawing them you're just suggesting them I've just put a few more shapes in just to suggest people that are much more distant now I'm going to put heads on don't worry about faces at that distance we're using the brown from the rocks just putting on little dabs of heads you only have to suggest people if they are 100 meters away so it's broken up the beach a little bit no so the next stage now is to warm up the sea a little bit so i'm taking a number four brush and we're just going to mix up some turquoise with a hint of French ultramarine and put a second coat on the sea and I can leave some streaks so I'll start with the horizon go up to the rocks because it's a calm day and the tides out there's no white water around the rocks most times I've been to this beach there's been lots of white water I'm now going to change to a flat brush and just put in some lines to show the currents And leave the first coat of paint showing through. It doesn't have to show through much, but gives a suggestion. And now I need to come back to these rocks that just had a basic coat on, which is dried. And they are quite warm in the sun. So I'm going to use the yellow ochre again. And just put a gentle coat on. There is actually some grass on top, so I'm getting number one brush and some sap green, mixing it with yellow ochre. I'm just dropping it on and on the promontory going out and then working my way back as well. And then just dropping some stronger colour into the top and add some lemon yellow. Just to make it stand out. Any yellow will send another colour back. It's just sort of like opposite magnets and then to give it harmony put some on the cliff further away now I'm going to get a dry brush and just feather them together just a little bit give it a lost edge so the next thing I've got to do is to tickle the edge of the blue paint which I'm going to use a flat brush for so there's no white paper showing so you can see that the sand just go all the way to the water. I'm using very rough paper, it's rag paper. If you were using smooth paper, it might join immediately, but this skips over the tooth of the paper. So sometimes you just, to get a better visual effect, you need to tickle the edges. It also causes a slight change in tone to the sand. So it looks like it's going down into the water. I'm just getting a very, very weak mixture of French ultramarine and Azillian crimson and just making some of the blue a little bit deeper. It's really all glowing in the afternoon light. So just putting very, very watery mix on. Just all makes the afternoon look a warmer temperature. And then to finish the picture off, I'm just going to add a slightly darker horizon to the headland. So I'm using the sky colour that I've just used that I used earlier. I'm mixing it with the green. Just putting on a definitive line and then making the green a little bit darker on the seaward side. And then there's a yellowy front where I think it's just given up with the pounding of the waves and before I completely finish just checking that I've got the shape of cliffs and anything else that I need taking the little line back Making another area slightly more obvious on one side. I gave it a moment to dry off and I've just 
highlighted a few more dark areas of the rocks and a few more reflections in the wet beach. I hope you've enjoyed watching and that you'll try painting a local walk yourself quite soon.